Okay, we're going to continue our discussion of permutations and cycles by introducing a particular kind of cycle called a transposition. Okay, so the definition of a transposition. A transposition is a cycle with only two distinct entries. Okay. In general, given any two a and b in the set 1 through n, the cycle a, b is a transposition on the set 1 through n. That's it. That's all there is to it. And notice, by the way, I've done away with the commas in the notation for a cycle to make it more distinct from a point in space. Okay, so that is a transposition. It's just a cycle with two entries. Essentially it. Moving on. For example, the cycle 1-3 is a transposition on the set 1 through 4. Why? Because there's just two entries. Next, a definition. A transposition consisting of adjacent elements is called an adjacent transposition. Okay. In general, given any alpha, oh, sorry, not alpha, given any a in the set one through n minus one, the cycle a a plus one is an adjacent transposition in the set one through n. Why? That's because they're right next to each other, right? And given any b in the set 2 through n, b minus 1, b, is an adjacent transposition on the set 1 through n. Why is that? Why? That's because b minus 1 is right next to b. That's why, they're, uh, that's why it's an adjacent transposition, because the two entries are adjacent to each other. Moving on. An example, okay? The transposition 3, 4 is an adjacent transposition on the set 1 through 4 because 3 is right next to 4. Moving on, a definition. Two cycles are said to be disjoint if they have no entries in common. Okay. Two cycles are said to be disjoint if they have no entries in common. Let's move on and see if we can get an example of that. And there is one. Okay, so for example, the product of cycles 1, 2, and 3, 4 is a product of disjoint cycles. These cycles are disjoint because they have no entries in common. Okay, so observe the first cycle, or rather the first transposition, because these are transpositions. It has 1 and 2, whereas the second cycle, also a transposition, has 3 and 4. Those two cycles don't have entries in common. The first one has 1 and 2, and the, the second one has 3 and 4. Those are disjoint. Okay? Note that disjoint cycles commute with respect to composition. Although we will not prove this fact, it is hoped that the previous example will be enough to convince the viewer that veracity of this claim is easy to see. The viewer should verify that the product of cycles 1, 2, and 3, 4 is equal to the product of cycles 3, 4, and 1, 2 by direct computation. So go ahead and compute those two cycles and see that they're actually the same permutation. And I guess I hope that that's enough to convince you and that we don't have to do a full-blown proof of that fact. It, should be obvious once you do that computation that disjoint cycles commute. All right, moving right along. Note also that it was discussed earlier that not all permutations were cycles, strictly speaking. And it was mentioned that all permutations can be written in terms of cycles. We will soon prove that a permutation that is not a cycle can not only be written as a product of cycles, but also disjoint cycles. Okay, that's a much stronger statement. Okay, it will soon be proved that a permutation that is not a cycle can not only be written as a product of cycles, but disjoint cycles. Okay, moving on, our aim will be to eventually show that any permutation can be written as a product of transpositions, and that no permutation can be written as one product of an even number of transpositions, and another product of an odd number of transpositions. That is, no matter how one expresses a permutation as a product of transpositions, 
that product must either always have an even number of transpositions or always have an odd number of transpositions. And that's a big deal. Unfortunately, those proofs will come in a later video. Stay tuned, and I'll see you next time.